So today I'll cover pretty much everything there is to know about the Illusionist monster card type and how I believe they will impact Yu-Gi-Oh in the future. So my knowledge is primarily based on two things. So first of all, the research that I've done on the subject, but also my experience with the video games. So in case you didn't know already, the concept of Illusionist isn't entirely new to Yu-Gi-Oh as it did exist in the old video games. And of course, I'm old, so I've had the pleasure of playing with the old video games like Yu-Gi-Oh! The Secret Cards, and that was a blast, by the way. But more of that later. Right now, we'll focus on the essentials. But before we begin, I just want to point out that Neo Arcadia has posted a really good article on Yu-Gi-Oh! Org, and I really recommend you guys to take a look into it. The article link will be in my description box. Alright, so first things first, the Illusionist type is basically Spellcasters 2.0, the same way Worm is Dragon 2.0. The main difference between Illusionist and Spellcasters is that Illusionist are creatures that more or less exist in the real world. Look, if you're into Naruto, let's just say that Illusionists are Genjutsu users and Spellcasters are Ninjutsu users. And Spellcasters are usually human-like, whereas Illusionists are kind of like monsters-like. By the way, the term Illusionist and Dream are completely interchangeable because the actual word used in the old video games was actually Dreams. Well, look, I don't know about all the video games, but at least in Sacred Cards. So at the current moment of making this video, there are four Illusionist monsters and they all bear the Eye of Widget, which appears on the Millennium items. That eye is also found on the Monsters of Pegasus and it's a perfect embodiment of what the Illusionist monster card type is. A bunch of monsters with the ability to hypnotize their victims and take control of them, but not really destroy them. And by the way, some of the monsters that Pegasus played were actually illusionist in the video games. That's kind of obvious though. Now I know what you're thinking right now. But Yak Sign, does that mean the old illusionist-like monsters that Pegasus used to play will become illusionist when we get Duelist Nexus? That's entirely up to Konami to decide, and I do believe it would make sense. I remember back in 2013 when Pokemon introduced the fairy type to their game, they also had to change the typing of some Pokemon for consistency sake. Even in the older game's entries, I do remember that Snowball used to be described as a fairy type Pokemon even though he was normal. We could have the same thing happen in Yu-Gi-Oh where cards like Dream Clown or Genin or Jig and Bakudan and many more turn into illusionist monsters. I don't believe though that they should also be getting an effect errata to reflect the new behavior of illusionist monsters because that would make playing with the older cards really annoying. And the reason why I even brought that up is because the illusionist monsters all share a common ability. As I said before, they're not really experts in battle, so they can't really destroy or get destroyed in battle. This is very logical again for what the typing is supposed to represent because they're illusionists, so they're not really fighters. And they also only half exist in the real world, they're just occult creatures. Now I can already anticipate everyone's main concern. So how long will it take for this type to finally become playable in the game? It's definitely going to have to take at least 2 to 3 to even 4 sets, which translates to around half a year to a year. Look at Cybers for example, when they were introduced alongside Link monsters in 2017, they weren't any better than Zodiac or True Draco, but they ended up being really good a while after. We ended up getting several insane Cybers decks as well as really good Cyber staple monsters in the extra deck. And we can say the same for the Psychic and Weird typing. Another big concern that a bunch of players had when the Illusionist card type has first been announced was whether they would be archetype locked or not. So because of the fact that the typing started out with the Burfomet archetype, a lot of people believed that it would be the case. Now, the Psychic typing also started with a really bad flaw as well. They were all pretty generic monsters with no cohesion with them whatsoever, and the only thing they kind of did in common was pay life points to do something. But there weren't really any Psychic decks, and there was kind of no way to really search or special summon psychic monsters for a while. But eventually we started getting cards like Emergency Teleport, fucking Krebons, and Mindmaster, which incentivized players to incorporate psychic cards in their strategy. Although it still took a while before we actually started getting real psychic decks such as Cosmo, Metal Fool, Spunk, etc. With that being said, that is in the past now and I do believe that Konami learned from this as we can clearly see with Cybers. So no, I do not believe that Illusionist is going to be nothing but a gimmick and I do believe that they will be very good in a year or so. For now, we just have to remain patient and see what Konami does. I definitely have faith in this typing and I do think that it will make the game way more enjoyable. I might be a little biased because I've been waiting for this for like 20 years, but hey, let's have a little bit of hope. Anyways, that's all I had to say for this video. Guys, I want to hear your thoughts about this typing in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.